منو میذاری میری بلی کی میدونه من چی میگشم On the 10th day of Muharram, 61 AH, according to the lunar calendar, Imam Hussein and his loyal companions faced martyrdom in Karbala. By examining historical records and rival accounts, we can reconstruct a chronological timeline of the events that unfolded on Ashura at 5.48 AM. After the Fajr prayer, Imam Hussain addressed his companions, exhorting them to show patience and determination in the face of adversity. He prayed, O oh Allah, you are my helper in every calamity. Simultaneously, Umar ibn Asad, leading the opposing army, also conducted their prayers and organized their forces. Around 6 a.m., Imam Hussein ordered the digging of a defensive trench behind the tents and filled it with thorny bushes, aiming to hinder potential attacks from the rear. At 7.04 a.m., as the sun rose, Imam Hussein mounted a camel to make himself visible to all. He approached the army of Kufa and delivered a passionate address. During his speech, the Imam recounted the virtues of himself, his brother Imam Hassan, and their noble father, Imam Ali, reminding the people of Kufa about the letters they had sent asking for his assistance. He called individuals by name, directly addressing them. When they denied sending the letters, the Imam threw the correspondence towards them, concluding his argument. During the sermon, a member of Omar ibn Asad's army questioned the Imam about not swearing allegiance to Ibn Ziyad to avoid the humiliation of war against the grandson of the Holy Prophet. In response, Imam Hussein uttered the famous words, Yes, I am faced with a choice between being killed or accepting humiliation, and humiliation is far from us. This powerful speech lasted for three minutes. At around 8 a.m., following the Imam's address, some of his companions, such as Zuhair bin Qayyim, delivered speeches similar to his, addressing the Kufi army. After these speeches, Imam Hussein made the iconic call, Hal min nasirin yansurna? Is there anyone to help us? This call touched the hearts of several members of the Kufi army, including Hazrat Hur. Around 9 a.m., as the day progressed, Shimmer questioned Umar ibn Saad about the delay in initiating the battle, pushing him to take action. Provoked by Shimmer, Umar ibn Saad prepared to commence the battle and launched the first arrow towards Imam Hussein's army. He declared, O oh, people, bear witness to Ibn Ziyad that Umar Ibn Saad has initiated the battle. Following Umar Ibn Saad's arrow, archers from the Kufi army unleashed a barrage of arrows upon Imam Hussein's forces. The Imam informed his companions that these archers represented the enemy army and there was no escape from death. He urged them to prepare for the imminent confrontation. The exact number of martyrs during this initial archery attack remains uncertain, but some narrations mention the martyrdom of 50 companions. At around 10 a.m., following the initial archery attack, two slaves named Yasser and Salim emerged from the Kufi army to engage in individual combat. Abdullah bin Amir sought permission from an al to fight and was noted as a formidable opponent. Abdullah successfully killed the two slaves but had his own fingers severed in the process. After these one-on-one -on -one combats, the Kufi army launched a collective attack. 
Hajar attacked from the right side of Ram Singh's army, defended by Habib and his comrades. Simultaneously, a group led by Shimmer attacked from the left side, counted by Zuhair bin Qayn and his allies. Shimmer himself sustained injuries during the assault. Following the retreat of both groups from the Kufi army, Umar ibn Saad dispatched around 500 archers to unleash another volley of arrows upon Imam Hussein's forces. The subsequent shower of arrows resulted in the injury and martyrdom of several companions with 22 horses from the Imam's army being wounded and falling. According to the Maqtal, Muslim Ibn Asaja was the first martyr of Ashura in Karbala. And when he fell wounded, Habib Ibn Muzahir mournfully expressed his desire to follow his example, stating, I wish I could follow your will. Muslim Ibn Asaja held the Imam's hand, raising it and declaring, I ask you to protect my Imam no matter what happens. During this time, eight members of the Imam's army were surrounded by the enemy, but Hazrat Abbas rescued them. At 12.50 p.m., Habib ibn Muzahir was martyred during the Adhan for Zohar prayers. The Imam was deeply saddened by Habib's martyrdom, and for the first time, tears streamed down his face as he looked up at the sky, saying, O oh God, I entrust the account of my own martyrdom and that of my companions to you. The Imam led a brief prayer, following the principles of the prayer of fear. Some companions joined the Imam in prayer, while others continued to fight. Zuhair ibn Qayyad and Abdullah Hanafi acted as shields for the Imam. Sayyid bin Abdullah was wounded by two arrows and spears, leading to his martyrdom. At around 1 p.m., after the Zohar prayers, 30 devoted companions of Imam Hussein remained alive, but they were martyred soon after. Following their martyrdom, it was the turn of Bani Hashim, the members of the Prophet's family. The first among the Bani Hashim to be martyred was Hazrat Ali Akbar bin Hussein. However, some sources claim that Abdullah bin Muslim ibn Aqil was the first martyr among the Bani Hashim. Abdullah ibn Muslim was martyred, and a group from Bani Hashim's army retaliated against the Kufi army. Imam Hussein encouraged the young men, saying, O oh my cousins, embrace death with patience. I swear by God, you will not face humiliation or suffering after that. At around 2 p.m., only Imam Hussein and Hazrat Abbas remained. Hazrat Abbas requested permission to enter the battlefield, but the Imam ordered him to deliver water to the thirsty children and women in the tents. The enemy deliberately separated the two brothers. Hazrat Abbas, displaying remarkable bravery, made valiant efforts to bring water to the camp, but lost both his arms in the process. Struck on the head with an iron rod, he fell from his horse to the ground. When Imam Hussein reached the body of his beloved brother, the enemy momentarily retreated. This was the second instance of the Imam shedding tears that day, lamenting. My back is broken. At around 3 p.m., Imam Hussein returned to the tents to bid farewell to the women and children. While bidding farewell to the Ahlul Bayt, Imam Hussein carried his infant son Hazrat Ali Asghar to the battlefield, requesting water for him. Tragically, Hazrat Ali Asghar was martyred by an arrow from Hormala. 
As the Imam proceeded towards the battlefield, no one from the enemy army dared to confront him directly. Instead, they resorted to distant arrow and spear throwing. At one point, Shimmer approached the Imam with five individuals. After the Imam's martyrdom, it was recorded that his body bore 34 spear wounds and 33 sword cuts. According to the Maqtal, as the Imam's martyrdom neared, none of the enemy soldiers dared to confront him face to face. Upon hearing the sound of the Imam's forces' hooves, the Ahlul Bayt understood that Imam Hussein had fallen and they rushed out of the tents. In the midst of this chaos, a child named Abdullah bin Hassan ran towards his uncle, only to be martyred by the enemy's army in the arms of his uncle Hussein. Deeply saddened by this cowardly act, the Imam cursed the Kufis, praying, O oh God, withhold rain from the sky and harvest from the earth for these enemies. 4.15 p.m. It is believed that during the Asr prayer, a tragic event unfolded that marked the martyrdom of Imam Hussein. Prior to this fateful moment, those present heard the Imam solemnly declare, I swear by God, no one shall have the ability to cause such a calamity after me, where God's wrath would be greater upon their actions than upon my own martyrdom. And then, in a heart-wrenching turn of events, Sanan bin Anas delivered a piercing blow to the Imam's heart. Overwhelmed with grief and pain, the Imam immediately fell into prostration. The soldiers, overcome by a deep sense of reverence, hesitated to approach him. But it was during this time of vulnerability that Shimmer, known for his ruthlessness, seized the opportunity. And with great sorrow, it is said that Shimmer mounted the Imam's back and carried out an act that forever stains the pages of history. A fateful act that led to the severing of the Imam's noble head. At around 6 p.m., following the martyrdom of Imam Hussein, members of the Kufi army stripped his body of clothing. Historical accounts state that all those who participated in desecrating his body suffered from incurable diseases and perished in hell. The Imam's belongings were looted, but Umar ibn Saad eventually ordered the looting to cease and assigned guards to protect the property. The sun was on the verge of setting when the Imam's head was given to Huli, who was tasked with taking it to Kufa that night and presenting it to Ibn Ziyad. Following Umar ibn Saad's orders, horses trampled over the Imam's corpse until his bones were reduced to dust. 6.59 p.m. This marked the end of an excruciatingly painful day and Umar ibn Saad ordered the Maghrib prayer. Sanan bin Anas stood among the Kufis and proclaimed, Fill my pockets with gold, for I have killed their best men. Thus the events of Ashura unfolded, leaving an undeniable mark on history. The bravery and sacrifice of Imam Hussein and his devoted companions are forever etched in the records of human valor. که